Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro Trinchera and today I would like to review with you the book of Eric Lerner, That Big Bang Never Happened. Eric Lerner's main field of research actually goes further and embraces an exciting model of plasma universe, not covered in my analysis because I'm just focusing on the Big Bang Theory. When I say Big Bang Theory, of course I'm not talking about the commercial TV sitcom, but about the commercial mainstream model of science. With respect, let me say, I have the impression that they are continuously trying to sell this model as truth, despite it is unlikely, not proven, and although there are more reliable scientific alternatives. They tell always the same story, wherever they are, without doubts, critical points and counterparts. It is the Big Bang Show. Cosmological ideas of the current model of the universe came out explicit by the society at the beginning of the last century, marked by its political, social and economic situation and based on the scientific knowledge of that time. The inflation idea came during the worst monetary inflation of the last century. The rise of financial speculation in Wall Street coincided exactly with the rise of cosmological speculations. A speculation does not produce any single valid prediction. In financial terms, it's built on debt and on the promise of future payments. In case of cosmology, it is built on promises of future experimental confirmations that so far we have not yet received. The cosmic inflation cannot be proven and moreover defies all laws of physics, such as mass and energy conservation, since in the Big Bang all the energy emerged from nothing. Without considering that the matter expanded at speeds greater than the speed of light, breaking up Einstein's fundamental assumptions in special relativity as well. Despite of that, the Big Bang is strangely accepted all over the scientific community. They have allowed themselves to break up the physical laws in order to keep alive the standard model. In an independent and more open-minded society, the Big Bang would be questionable and not taken for granted. The Manhattan Project for the building of the atomic bomb influenced the view of the cosmos by known scientists who played an important role in the development of the standard model in cosmology. As science, unfortunately, was able to produce a similar amount of energy by atoms in a millionth of a second, they thought by analogy that the universe could arise from a similar kind of process. The assumptions of the Big Bang begin from religious concepts contained in the Genesis, where heaven was stretched out. Due to this, science nowadays justifies the redshift only with the expansion of space. All other, more reliable physical alternatives are discarded a priori. Both sides must be opened up for new dialogues based on new observations and new calculations. The Big Bang theory has been clearly contradicted by observations, but it is still remains the dominant cosmological model of the universe, because too much work was dedicated for it, and due to its connection to religion. After all, the Ptolemaic system remained dominant even many years after the introduction of the Copernican system. The Ptolemaic system, based on unquestioned assumptions like the unchanging heavens, the centrality of Earth and the necessity of circular motions was mythical cosmology. The Copernican system, perfected by Kepler and Galileo, introduced less elegant elliptic orbits, but they are still properly describing the planet orbits with the centrality of our star. The current standard model is a kind of Ptolemy system, which is far away from real observations. The Big Bang theory has adjustable parameters to justify observations which deviate from the theory and clearly contradict the Big Bang hypothesis. By adjusting ad hoc or densities and time windows in the various stages of the inflation, the Big Bang can produce heavy elements. It cannot be proven, cannot be tested, but it is the official version. Nowadays, we know for sure that it is inside the stars that the heavy elements are produced. By the fusion of hydrogen to helium, the stars go to supernova and distribute the helium into the universe. In addition, cosmic rays from these stars can produce the observed amounts of deuterium and lithium by collisions with hydrogen and helium ambient. 
We observe little bands scattered all over the cosmos instead of only one not proven Big Bang. If the Big Bang really took place, we should expect more heavy elements than observed. For the Big Bang theory, ordinary geometry does not work at great distances by magic. On Earth, in a solar system, in a galaxy and in a local group, we experience a non-expanding space. And the farther away the objects are in space, the smaller they appear according to our perspective. Galaxies appear to be moving away from us and really fast in every direction, when actually their proper motion does not actually exceed values bigger than a thousand of kilometers per second. They state that any observer anywhere would see the same thing. They deny the fact that they are describing a universe centered on Earth, where this principle does not make sense since our local space is not expanding. The expansion of space is only one of a multitude of mathematical solutions of the Einstein's field equations in general relativity. They have chosen the only one able to support the Big Bang. The Big Bang in an expanding universe predicts that the surface brightness of astronomical objects decreases with the power of 3. But observations show that in fact the surface brightness of galaxies up to a redshift of 6 is exactly constant, as predicted by a non-expanding universe. Our current scientific knowledge shows that the universe is not expanding, and that the redshift of light must be due to some other causes, perhaps in the properties of light itself. When a photon of light collides against an electron, it gives up energy shifting the wavelength to red. For instance, one can find these effects at the limb of the Sun, in the intergalactic medium and in the quasars, where the electron density is much higher, just like the redshift. Moreover, it is the reason why we can state that the quasars cannot be at their cosmological distance, and they do not match the Hubble law. The universe that we can see is not limited in space or in time. With future telescopes, such as the James Space Webb Telescope, we will be able to see much older structures than the current age of the universe, assumed by the Big Bang. The main evidence for dark matter is in the measurements of the rotational speeds of the galaxies, which is too high for high radii. According to a Newtonian approach, they would expect a decrease in velocity. The solution may lie in the gravitation itself. For instance, there is high concentrations of white dwarfs in the external region of spiral galaxies, since white dwarfs are compact objects with high mass in a small volume. Measurements show high proper motions. Therefore, the flat curve in velocity could be attributed to white dwarfs, or in relativistic effect from general relativity, or direct related to light, or in matter driven by magnetic fields. They have chosen the most unreliable hypothesis, which is the existence of a not observed and apparently not existing dark matter, when the solution may actually lie in the observable matter. Galaxies are organized into filaments surrounded by large voids. At a large scale, the structure of the universe is inhomogeneous, clearly contradicting the cosmological principle. It is an issue for the Big Bang theory, because simply there is not enough time to form these structures in the hypothetical 40 billion years, given the observed velocities of galaxies in the present-day universe. As soon as they discovered the cosmic microwave radiation, it was directly seen in the background and unfairly explained only in Big Bang terms without doubts. We know that the energy produced by massive stars, or in general by galaxies, is absorbed and remitted by the intergalactic medium. Collision between photons and electrons would scatter radio and microwaves in all directions. The cosmic microwave radiation must be local and coming from all galaxies. Moreover, the galactic nuclei emit jets of high-charged particles, such as electrons which move and change trajectories along high magnetic fields. It causes the emission of radiation in the radio and microwave field of the spectrum. The largest angular scale components of the fluctuations and isotropy 
in the cosmic microwave radiation plot are not random, but have a strong preferred orientation in the sky toward the Virgo cluster and lie exactly along the axis of the local supercluster filament, of which our galaxy is a part. This entirely contradicts the Big Bang hypothesis, which states that cosmic microwave radiation is primordial behind all clusters and that is the echo of the Big Bang itself. 